known as the Japanese Hanbo. So this is 36 inches. You're going to make this out of something that you can get from your local hardware store. This is an oak dowel. You can get a poplar dowel. Poplar's not going to be as hard. Oak's a little bit nicer, and you're talking about two or three dollars difference in price. It's going to be under ten dollars. If you could find hickory, that would be even better. Maybe if you go to like a woodworker shop, I'm going to lower the camera just a little bit. You're going to be able to find something like hickory or other hardwoods at woodworker shops. But almost any Lowe's, I got this from Lowe's, Lowe's, Home Depot, you can get an oak dowel and make your own self-defense walking stick or a hanbo. And I'm also going to show you some basic things on how to use it. Starting with this simple, you're holding it as a walking stick, it's on the ground. You lift it up, now it's in that other hand, and you have a thrusting motion. So that's the very first thing that I want you to see. And I haven't sanded it yet, so I'm going to go light. I don't want any splinters in my hand. I don't want you to get splinters either. I'm going to show you how to properly prepare it so you don't get splinters. Good afternoon, everybody. Justin says, good afternoon. It's good to see you, Justin. But the basic first move, once you get it into two hands, this is the Hanbo. We're working on, the, the bow staff is six feet. The question is, is that the bow staff, this is the hanbo. There's the bow, which is the long staff. There's the joe, which comes up to your armpit, about 54 inches. That's the medium staff. And then the ninja, the Aikido guys, I gotta really move back so you can see it. They like the length of this stick, and I do too. You're gonna love the length of this stick because you can pretty much take it anywhere it doubles as a walking stick and once you finish it it's going to look really nice now i'm going to show you all these different basic moves that you can do as we get this properly prepared but if i get too crazy with it i'm going to end up with splinters prepare first your weapon before you get splinters this 36 inch dowel it's also an inch and a quarter round so it's very thick i have big chunky hands i wanted a big one i recommend if your hands aren't as big as mine Go for one inch. You can go a little bit smaller than that too. Good afternoon, Texan Rider. This, here it is. This is the receipt. This is what I spent. I had to buy some other things yesterday to get ready for the week at work. And where is it? it should be that first one up there, I think. I have to move back a little bit. I have to look at it myself. No, the first one is the sandpaper. It's the last one. $9.77. Hello, LM, for this oak dowel from Lowe's Hardware. It's about exactly the same price if you go to Home Depot, you go to Ace Hardware, small stores, you pay a little bit more, but you're not paying that much more than 10 bucks. It's about that size, right? So the first thing you're going to do, I bought sandpaper and the pack of sandpaper that I bought. Now, I have some sandpaper, but I wanted to buy some to show you the best one that I think you should buy when you're learning how to make your own self-defense stick or the Japanese Hanbo. Again, the Ninja, this is the Ninja stick, Ninja walking stick, Aikido walking stick. You see it, Kobudo, traditional Okinawan and um, Japanese styles. Hello, uh, KKYAL. The sandpaper was the first one. So that's six bucks, $6.98. And the nice thing is if you buy the sandpaper, it's gonna last you for a long time. You'll have it for other projects. If you don't have it already, but see what that says? 80, 120, and 220 grit. That's how many little pieces of sand per inch. So you have 80, that's very rough. That's gonna take off the hard, nasty stuff. 120, that's the middle. You're gonna do that. You're gonna uh, sand it with this one first. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Sand with this one second. And then finally, when you sand with this one, that's gonna make it super smooth, but you won't be done yet. I'm gonna show you how to finish it. So we're gonna start, like I said, it's a walking stick. You put it into two hands. Now you can create distance. You simply thrust right through his face, through his throat, through his uh, solar plexus. You can also bring this around. It's very short, so you're not going to have too much distance or trouble coming above your head, coming from your shoulder, striking with one hand, striking with two hands. And there's a lot of moves that you're going to do here. But like I said, I'm going to get a splinter if I don't take care of the rough spots first. Let me lower this a little bit. So this oak dowel, when they make these, I'm gonna start sanding. This is the, start with your 80 grit, your most, your, the lowest number. That means it's gonna be the roughest. That's gonna take the most wood off. You're gonna start that one first. Oh, I forgot. There's a sticker, but all these stickers are designed to just peel right off. And if it doesn't come off, if it leaves some residue, 
you can use a little bit of oil to take that off or tea tree oil. I was told recently and I tried it, tea, tea, tro tea tree oil. Uh, good afternoon, tea, tea says, good afternoon. That's a really good way to, um, it's a cleaning agent, right? It kills germs, tea tree oil. It's an old remedy, but it also takes stickers off. These stickers they put on them, they usually just come right off and now it's gone. There's no residue, it's not sticky. It's ready for me to continue sanding with the 80 grit paper. When, you, when they first make these, oak dowels or any wood, any wood that you buy from a hardware store, they kiln dry it. That means they, they cut it to the size and they stick it in an oven, a kiln, like you would pottery, but it's not as hot, hot. And they sit there for a long time in a low heat and it sucks all the moisture out of the wood. So the wood becomes lighter in weight, but it also becomes more brittle. It will break, not too brittle because you still use it for building projects. But you're going to, that's why you're going to have to oil this and you oil it and keep oiling and keep oiling. You can either soak it in oil and then wipe it off after a couple days and start to use it. Or I'm going to show you how to get started right away and then let it uh, soak it overnight. You don't really need to stick it in, you know, five gallons of oil. You can, but you need to oil it up first. Uh, Johnny says oil soaked his today and Justin agreed exactly. All right. So super simple. You don't want to squeeze hard when you sand. When you sand anything, you want to make small circular motions. We're going to go fast, so we're just going to wrap it all the way. We're going to let the sandpaper do the work, put a little bit of pressure there, gentle pressure. And as I go through, I'm turning. And I don't know if you can see the dust coming off. It's getting really dusty in here. I've got the, uh, I have to, do the floors anyway. So I always had the shop vac ready. So I just hit that for a few seconds, right? I'm gonna do that for about 20 seconds on one side. I turned it. And again, I'm just turning as I'm going through, turning, and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? You're gonna get it better over time. And as you use it, you're gonna oil sand, oil sand, oil sand. You're gonna always be oiling and sanding. You're gonna eventually maybe Maybe you have a partner and you hit this against something or use it for self-defense or you're training against something that's harder than a bag and then you are going to have to sand it again. Anytime you get little dents in it or little pieces coming up, you just sand those down. Now that's the first level. That's the 80 uh, grit. And then I'm going to put that down. All sandpaper has the grit number on the back. See, that's 220. That's too much. It looks like they put two pieces of each in this pack that I bought. I put some links below. If you need to order, if you don't have like a hardware store close um, and you want to go to Amazon, I put links below on the dowel, on the sandpaper, on the mineral oil. And it's about the same price, right? And if you have Prime, it's free shipping. But this one, there's that 3M brand. 3M owns everything, right? 120 medium grit. So medium, it means smoother, right? That's, I think it says that. Does that say... Yeah, smooths. What's the first one say? The 80 grit says coarse removes. How smart is 3M? Removes, that's exactly, removes the big chunks. And there were two. There were some exposed uh, splinters that I would have gotten in my hand if I started using it the way that I'm going to teach you how to use the Hanbo for self-defense. The Hanbo, again, this is the, uh, the Nijitsu uses this a lot. The Ninja used to use this. It's just a way to disguise it. You can carry it like this in either hand. When you have to, you get it in this hand, and now you can push someone off. You can block. You can block across your body. You can do twisting blocking motions the same way you would use your Joe, uh, the shorter or the medium-sized staff. You can do these thrusting motions. You can do this striking motion coming down here, switching hands. It's very fight with it, almost like you would a sword. You can deflect things. If someone grabs a tip, you can roll them into the ground. You can reach in, put it between someone who's choking someone else, put it between their hands, smash them under the ground. So there are a lot of ways I'm going to show you and all, the, all of these uh, how to use a walking stick for self-defense videos. This one here, the Hanbo, this is... The, the shorter size, there are three sizes, traditional Japanese uh, staff. The first one is the Hanbo, which is a walking stick you would lean on. Say, say, and this is the same length, basically, as a cane with a crook on it. You cut the crook off here, 
That's where you would be with your cane. You just pop it right into your hand, boom, strike, and this will double as a walking stick if you need a walking stick. And this one, like I said, it's a little bit thicker. This is oak. I used the 80 grit sandpaper. So now it says smooth. The first one removed, second one, there it is, 120 grit smooths. So this is medium. So you're gonna do the same thing. Light grip and turn your hand as you do it. Just turn all around in that different, wear a mask. Hey, that's a good use for all of these. Uh, the, um, what do they call that, COVID? The COVID mask. I had all these other words come in my head. I gotta be politically correct. I don't wanna get banned. All the, the COVID mask, you still have a stack of those and you don't need to wear them into the grocery store anymore. Put one on and now it's really doing something. It's keeping real particles out. It doesn't really stop the COVID, but now you can breathe cleaner air as you practice or as you stand your fighting self-defense stick. And if I just offended you, so be it. All right, yes, no kidding, Justin says, ha ha, no kidding. I'm not getting political, I'm just making a joke. All right. Maybe it's a political joke. I don't know. All right, turning. It's just that that guy here in the United States, that, that uh, what's his name, the Fauci guy, they, they read his emails and he's like, that ah, doesn't work. He keeps saying it doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. You know, but he, then he goes out in public and tells everybody, wear a mask. So just a joke. Anyway, yeah, they do work great for rust removal, spray painting. Sometimes, sometimes you got to take your kids into the public bathroom when you're at the store and you're like, oh, thank goodness I have the mask. It stinks in here. So yeah, cracks you up. So that's a good use for the mask or use it when you're sanding. So I'm smoothing now with my 120 grit, almost done, it's just a few seconds. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, because, but I can already feel it's a lot smoother. You're gonna get this buttery smooth. That means it's gonna fall through or slide through. Your hands pop, pop. When you fight with it, when you slide forward, you have all of these different motions, spinning motions, hand changing positions, using this. And Singe Man says, never wore it. I stopped wearing mine months ago too, way before I was allowed to, according to the whom, right? But anyway, let's, let's stay on track. Just lifted the mask mandate in Ohio. Oh, thank goodness. I, I didn't think old chicken neck. I love Mike DeWine because I believe that he really cares about kids. Like when he was a senator and, um, you know, he, he, he used to, I mean, Mike DeWine, Mike DeWine's the governor of Ohio. Mike DeWine really cared about the kids. And I used to go to his ice cream social in, uh, in his big, big family farm. His money made money, or his family made money in seeds, if you don't know that. Mike DeWine's money, huge families, like a billion DeWines all over Southwest Ohio. And he would have this uh, big uh, thing. And um, yeah, <laughs> Singe Man says, uh, YouTube strikes and I block it really fast. Okay, anyway, Mike DeWine, um, but when he taught, he's a very small man, but he's, he, his head moves like this. I always call him chicken neck. He always does a chicken neck. And when I teach people how to do push-ups, most people, they look at the ground when they do push-ups and they lead with their head and they think they're doing push-ups, but they're really, I said, don't do the DeWine chicken neck. I don't know why I told you that inside joke. Doesn't really matter, except for Justin, who has been dealing with old Mike DeWine himself, keeping everybody safe. Ohio, of all places. Wear the mask, right? Come on. Anyway, come on, man. I digress quite a bit. <laughs> Let me get back on track. Now, we did 120, we start with 80, we did 120, we're on our oak dow. And, but Mike DeWine's a good guy, really good guy. Um, he's a career politician though. He's been, he was Secretary of State. He's been the Senator and uh, comes from a, a family of politicians. They made all their money selling seeds to farmers for like a million years. Old money, fine, 220 fine. And what's that say? Finishes. So you're going to the finishing paper. Last one, and each one of these will take about 30, 40 seconds for your whole staff, and, and you can spend more time. It's your staff. Do whatever you want. When you build your self-defense fighting stick, make it the way you want it. For less than 10 bucks plus a couple dollars in sandpaper and a few cents in uh, uh, mineral oil, or the oil I'm going to show you, the ones I use. I use linseed, boiled linseed. I use, uh, uh, I can't think of it now, but it's back there, the finer stuff. But I start with linseed oil or mineral oil, 
and I'm gonna do this fine sandpaper. And like I said, you only need, you can, there you go, see the dust coming off. Turn, turn your hand while you're turning it. This is a loose grip. Sandpaper, if no one's ever taught you this, I grew up sanding walls with my painter's pole and my sanding pole. That's how I got into fighting with sticks in the first place. Um, that in martial arts, of course. But you learn that you let, you let, and that's what I love about sticks, let the stick do the work of self-defense. Let the sandpaper do the work of sanding. Just put a tiny bit of, uh, oh man, that is smooth. It really does finish it. Hold on, I gotta get my sandpaper. I just dropped it. I got all excited when I felt how smooth that was. That was the problem. I had two pieces together. So, flip it over. I'll show you from the other side. I always like to do both the, everything, both hands, ambidextrous, make my brain really work. It's gonna do the same thing over here. Coming through, and it's funny. Um, the finer the grit, the more it's gonna kind of grip. And so you can also do this. See how I have that? Doesn't wanna work, there we go. Super light, yeah, now we got it. I just had to lighten my grip. Lighten and turn, super, super fast. Doesn't have to be really hard. Tongue oil, that's the other oil I have, T. Um, yeah, that's right, that's all I got too. Hey, uh, from Tallahassee, it's Richard. Hello, uh, Richard. Tallahassee, it's good to see you today. Beautiful down here. We were just at the beach this weekend. My son found this uh, massive fossilized shark tooth. Looked like a megalodon tooth, like this big. It's really nice. Great time to find them right now. All right, so yeah, Justin says that works great. Tongue oil, I'm assuming. All right, so now if you're super fancy, you would have some cheesecloth. And cheesecloth will pull all the fine dust off, or you can go like this. See that? Now it's all over the camera. That's why you need good lungs. He said, Sam, I'm showing you the absolute worst way to prepare your own hanbo. Now, I didn't show you the end. Now, this is still a little coarse. I'm gonna hit that with, I'm gonna go back to my, we're, we're building a self-defense walking stick for less than 10 bucks. This is an oak dowel I got from the local hardware store. Here's my 80 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna hit the tip there. And if you want, you can bevel, you can kind of bevel that, and that'll help it slide through your hands a little bit better. But this is your walking stick. Make this self-defense walking stick the way you wanna make it. I'm gonna show you how to use it. But basically, the Japanese call this the hanbo. Okinawan, Japanese, depending on your tradition. Uh, maybe you come from Aikido or uh, Jiu Jitsu or, well, not Jiu Jitsu, like the old style Jiu Jitsu where they have Kobudo, not the new Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. They don't use a weapon, but their mind, right? Their mind in their hands um, and everything else. But um, Ninja Jitsu, that's what I was thinking of, the ninja. The, those ninjas sneaking around and they got their walking stick and they're acting like an old man because they're in costume. They love, to, they love to come up with stuff like that, by the way. I love ninja schools. Ninja schools, you go in there and they're walking around with the lights off sometimes and they're practicing stabbing into some uh, cardboard. They're practicing sneaking up on somebody right in the back. <laughs> I'm only half joking because I've seen it. I've seen them do it. I won't name any names either. But if you've ever worked with, and nothing against ninjutsu, I love all styles. All right, so I've gotten most of the... There we go. Some still coming off. It's like a flute, like a massive, like, I don't know how to play the flute. I've seen it done, but I don't know how to do it. All right. So I just have this old towel. That's the martial arts school I built and ran for almost, you know, 25 years. Still up there, but under a slightly different name, run by a great martial artist in Dayton, Ohio. Good. Uh, T said, making a Joe staff, got the training canes. Uh, since Amos said, call it a hanbo in the traditional system. Yes, this is the hanbo. So we now have the, the bow, the long, the 72 inches, and the 54 inch Joe. And then we come down to 36 inches to 40, 42 maybe. That's your hanbo. Um, I feel something though. So this is what you do. You go around and you feel 
for little rough spots. And there's one right there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it pops out. And so you come back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start all over. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna isolate that area until I feel it break it down with my 80 grit remover that removes the gnarly stuff. You don't wanna get any of these, uh, you know, it's beautiful oak. You don't wanna get an oak splinter. So um, Richard said he made an oak dowel years ago or an oak bow from an oak, uh, oak dowel. Yeah, they do work well. Some finer woodworking stores, you can get longer pieces of oak. Yeah, this is the Hombo, Richard's right. So, all right, now I'm gonna, and, and then over time, you're gonna keep messing with your sandpaper until you get it perfectly smooth. And I'm kind of, you know, going faster. I'm gonna skip up to my finishing 120 grit. I gotta really lighten my grip, let it go through and spin. Smells like wood shop now. If you're old like me, you had wood shop, metal shop, uh, leather shop. You had shop class when you were a kid and you learned how to do all this stuff. I wish they would still teach those. I know some places do, but man, learning how to work with your hands, such a gift. And uh, we, we need to get kids learning how to work with their hands again, especially today. There's too much tablet time, too much screen time. We need kids to learn how to do shop or go to shop again. That's what I think, right? Me and Mike Rowe, or Mike Rowe and me, we believe you should do that. All right, Jeremiah, it's good to see you. Jeremiah says hello, happy to be here. So, Jeremiah, we're just working on making, yeah, old man, that's it. That's how we can do this. Um, Random American says, yep, old man shop class. That's what we'll do, we'll start old man shop class. This is the first episode of old man shop class. We're all old, we'll all start to work out together. We'll, 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 our shop class, though, will make weapons for self-defense. How fun would that be? Good. Uh, Jeremiah is a carpenter. Awesome, Jeremiah. You know more about this than I do. We're just getting a cursory look at how to build a self-defense stick. This is a 36-inch oak dowel, $9.77 from Lowe's yesterday. Picked up a little bit of sandpaper, three grits, 80, 120, and 220. So I uh, said the 80 grit is going to remove all that stuff. Um, smooth it down a little bit with that 120, and then... Look at this, look at how this is sliding already, even without putting the oil on it. I can now use this for thrusting for self-defense. I can use this for chopping in this direction coming. And, and that's the beauty. See the size of this? I can come from here to here. I can come down on top. I can block. I can block this way. I can block this way. I can block this way. All the ways that you can use this Hanbo. Someone grabs it, you can break their grip. You can thrust into the face, smash down on top. That's how you use the hombosis for self-defense. Yes, that's, that reminds me of, of my shop class in the poor girl, uh, Jane Awifi. Oh, I should have just said her name. I shouldn't have said her name. Anyway, I won't say any more than that. Um, nothing wrong, just, you know, it's little accidents that, that, uh, when we don't pay attention. That's why young kids today need shop class because in shop class, it's all about safety first. And if you're not paying attention, there's going to be some accident, some injury. And if you don't pay attention today for young kids, you know, they're, they're, um, they're clueless. Not all young kids, but a lot, a lot of kids are clueless because we don't hold them accountable. We don't give them opportunities to learn how to work with things that can hurt you. This is a throwing knife, by the way. I've been practicing my throwing a lot again lately, and um, I can't throw it at you right now, but... I'm gonna show you how to throw. Cause I thought, I love all martial arts and I throw all the time. I believe like if you get stranded on the island or you're stuck in the woods and you're hungry or your family's hungry, you pick up that rock and you see that squirrel, you should be able to hit it. You should be able to hit that bird, kill two birds with one stone. Be, you know, be able to throw it at that ground crab, smash it in the skull, crack it open, put it over the fire and eat it and then feed your family all from you know, like a little stone or a rock. Or if you're able to throw a knife or a sharpened stick or a spike or a shuriken, whatever it is, you should be able to defend yourself with throwing skills. It's all about distance. Throwing is for, for distance. This is for close up. So I'm going to show you guys how to throw too. I'm going to show you how to throw everything. Cause, and and I, was in, um, I was in the grocery store a couple days ago. There's a horrible shooting down here. 
uh, some man with schizophrenia, they think, goes in, executes a grandmother and a grandson, one years old. And, and, and I can't stop thinking about it. And I think, you know, how, you can't see that coming. You know, and it's, and it's not brand new. The world's been like this for a while. The world's always been like this. They just promote it and we get all crazy about it. But the news, you know, the news starts showing everything. But, um, yeah, you're right. Since Amos said there's a lot of stuff to get hurt with down here in my wood shop. But, so I'm in the grocery store and I'm thinking, okay, where are the weapons? They're everywhere, right? But um, I picked up a can of Progresso soup and I thought, this is a really nice, heavy can of small Progresso soup. And I wonder how accurate I would be at throwing this. And so I thought, okay, because I'm going to do a self-defense uh, weekend seminar down here. We're going to do some survival skills, uh, forage for food, make some shelter, find uh, improvised weapons, and practice throwing, practice self-defense, hand-to-hand, practice weapons. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, this, this can would be a perfect thing to bring out to the woods. You know, get a bunch of cans, old food, or whatever, and see what we can smash with a can. You're in the grocery store, the bad, you know, active shooter comes in, you don't have anything else, you pick up that can, you hit somebody, you can distract, you can knock somebody out with that. So we're gonna, we're gonna work on some of those things. But I have this so that I can open that. You always, I don't have a screwdriver right now, so I use my throwing knives, now I gotta clean that off a little bit. These are sharp too, that's, that's a nice one. All right, so this is the final step to prepare this. This is boiled linseed oil, and like I said, you can soak overnight your hanbo, your oak dao, you can soak it. You just put some on a rag. And before I forget, after you're done, put your rag outside, flatten it out, stick it on a rock, let it dry out. Don't crumple it up and throw it near a fire source or you'll cause a fire. Or it could spontaneously combust if, uh, if you just leave boiled or uh, oiled rags. Don't ever leave rags inside. Always take them out and let them dry out before you put them away. So this is all I'm doing. I'm just, yeah, it's funny. Johnny says, Zan for uh, pan flute fail. Justice says, no kidding. Super interesting about the kerosene, yes. You're just going through and you're just putting a light coating of oil on and then you can use the dry part, wipe that off. Now you're ready to use it for the first time. Now, it doesn't have all the oil in it that it needs, but it's ready to practice with, right? So from here, I now have a walking stick. I can pick it up and I can immediately strike with it. I can put it in two hands thrust. I can have two hands here. I can shove somebody back. I can box their ears with it. I can drive in this way come around the back way I can change my hand position I can lift them off the ground up under the chin smash down on top you can accelerate your strikes by sliding your hand down now when I picked this up from the store it was completely dried out and if I did that what I just did now I'd have two or three splinters in my hand so you have to prepare it first by sanding it and again I showed you three different grits if you don't have three grits use what you've got but sand it down that'll work you'll get in the right ballpark and then start to oil it. And then for the first few months, oil it every single time you use it. After you get done, put the oil back in it because your hand's gonna suck some of that oil out. Some of the oil from your hand is gonna go into it, which is great because that becomes part of your soul, your weapon, right? But, you, and then you want to, as you're using it, like I can feel, there's some places I can add some, yeah, I know, Dave. I, Dave said, uh, don't blame the schizophrenia. And I, I know, I, there's so much more to it. And I just don't want to get into it. My point is, I want to keep my family safe, right? And I know you guys do too. And that's why we're all talking about this stuff. That's why we're talking about how, do you, how to make your own self-defense stick and how to use it, right? Do it yourself, self-defense stick, and how to use it. Uh, creating distance, thrusting, striking, blocking, pushing, striking, shoving, lift them off the ground, hit that person behind you right swing it through on the bottom bring it around in one hand accelerate it and throw it through with one hand switch to that other hand it's one of the best most versatile sizes that you'll get you warm up the same way you do with your joe or your bow just twisting you can do your finger rolls it's a little oily so it's a little slick but 
perfect. Feels so great in my hand. And oak, I love, I've always loved oak. Oak and hickory. Hickory's now my new favorite because of my Cane Masters, Joe. If you want to see a really nice, look at the Cane Masters link below. But for 10 bucks, you can have a, an extra, and this is going to be hard. This is going to become stronger and more flexible the more oil you get into it. That's where soaking it is good. But, and, and if you, if you, if you have, if, um, I was thinking the, uh, a fishing, you know, a fishing rod carrier, one of those plastics, basically a PVC pipe, or you can go, you can go buy a diameter of PVC pipe that's a little bit thicker than this, put a cap on one side, get a cap for the other side. So it's just a little bit thicker and put this inside the PVC. This is how I used to do it. And then pour the oil in there until it sort of comes up to the top and then put the cap on, leave it there for a couple of days. And that's how you soak it into in, in, in the, the, the diameter, you know, maybe twice as big. This is an inch and a quarter. So you get like a two inch piece of PVC. So you got uh, 7.75 inches, you know, uh, diameter. And then it, it sits in that PVC pipe. And then, you know, as long as it's capped on both ends, you pour your oil in it. And then a couple of days later, you come out, you pull it out, you wipe off your oil, and then you're ready to uh, go again. But, but what's happening is when you first buy this, it's been kiln dried, dried, kiln dried. So they sucked all the moisture out of it. So it's not as strong as it would be naturally if it was still alive wood. So to rejuvenate the wood, you have to put the oil on it. And if you put the oil on it, you can either like this, use the rag and you know, the, it's gonna, it's not gonna get as much as soaking it, but it's gonna get a good amount. You can see the sheen comes back. And little by little, because if you do it consistently, more oil will then start to seep closer and closer into the center. And then when it comes to, into contact for self-defense or in practice, it's gonna be more flexible and less likely to break. It's gonna bend, wood bends before it breaks, right? Bend, 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 and then it finally breaks. So the more flexible it is, and this isn't, you can see it's not gonna go like this. It's not that kind of flexibility. It just needs a little bit of flexibility because it's also very thick and very hard because it is oak, it is a hard wood. So back to how do you use a self-defense stick? How do you use a walking stick for self-defense? You are simply walking with it, you feel the threat, and you, you bring it straight up. Now from here, if you were to bring your hand up, see how I kind of like just slide it up a little bit? You, you can strike in this way, strike in this way, come down over top just by turning. And we're gonna go over all those motions in the next video when we work. We're gonna start doing a bunch of these hanbo, how to use a hanbo for self-defense, how to use a walking stick for self-defense. But I wanted you to see, you can buy an oak dowel from Lowe's Hardware, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, any of the hardware stores, or online, I put the links below. And um, with a little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of time, a little bit of oil, you now have a very effective, powerful, strong self-defense walking stick that you can then use to create distance, strike with extreme force, block, knock somebody back, knock somebody out for self-defense. And it looks like a walking stick. And then if, if you're just leaning, you know, leaning on it, or if you use a walking stick, you can use this to train with and then use your walking stick for your everyday because it looks nicer or whatever. But you can do anything and everything with the Hanbo, almost everything that you can with the Joe. The Joe is the one that comes up to here. The Hanbo is down here. So some people prefer the Hanbo size because it's less conspicuous. It looks more like, you know, you just have a nice gentleman's cane or gentlewoman's cane because anybody can carry it. But it's, I mean, it feels so good. You're gonna love the way this feels. So take a look at those links below and see if you, you know, wanna order it. Usually they're there the same day or the next day and make one and we'll start training together and I'll show you all of the awesome things that you can do these. Yeah, Johnny says throw. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, you can also do that, that kind of throw. All right, so make one of these, come back in a couple days and we'll start training with it. We might train with it tomorrow, but I'm going to do a whole bunch of these. I'm going to do a video series. I'm going to try to number them, how to use the Hanbo for self-defense 
or walking stick self-defense. How does it use, can you use a stick for self-defense? Yes. Can you use a walking stick for self-defense? Yes. How do you use a walking stick for self-defense? Train with a Hanbo and then you'll know how to use a walking stick for self-defense. It's very simple. It's very powerful. You create distance. You have, you improve the power of all your strikes and this doesn't bleed. They come, the knife comes out. You'd rather hit this than hit your arm. If it's that uh, vicious dog that's mauled some people in the neighborhood and you have to stick this in the mouth and let them bite on this and chew on this, that's better than your arm. That's better than your hand. That's better than your neck or the inside of your thigh. Let them go after this, shove that in the mouth for self-defense, and then you're very safe. All right, Justin, everybody else, it's been so great. I'll see you guys in just a little